Welcome everyone, my name is Nazem Toksevul and I will be your guide in today's presentation. In today's presentation, I will go over the fundamental characteristics of the financial statements for an insurer. Before we start, I want to take a moment to introduce myself. I am a finance professional with over 10 years experience encompassing the financial services and insurance industry. I am a licensed CPA, I, and I earned my MBA from Rutgers University and my Bachelor's of Science from William Patterson University. I also hold the Associate in Insurance Accounting and Finance designation from the institutes. Now, let's get back to the topic of this presentation. The financial statements of an insurance company carry distinctive characteristics that distinguishes it from the, those of organizations found in other industries. Nearly all accounting frameworks require the presentation of the balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement from companies across all industries, the insurance industry being no exception. The deviation of the insurance industry originates from the unique business model practiced by insurers and the regulatory environment that insurers operates in. The esoteric nature of the business and regulatory environment has given rise to unique financial statement accounts, accounting practices, and nomenclature and jargon used within the profession. Rules, practices, and profession norms varies between jurisdictions and even companies. For this reason, this presentation will be a U.S.-focused high-level overview of general fundamental distinctions of insurers' financial statements. I will also focus on the balance sheet and income statement, which are the core financial statements uh, for an insurance company. I will review the distinctive characteristics of an insurer's balance sheet, income statement, and briefly touch on the cash flow statement and the notes and disclosures to the financial statements. In this presentation, I will assume that the audience has at least foundational accounting knowledge. If you lack this accounting background, you can still watch and glean some pearls of insight, but it may be more difficult to follow along. The balance sheet is designed to present a snapshot of an organization's total assets, liabilities, and net worth at a single point of time. The balance sheet of an insurance company generally follows the same form as that of other industries with certain fundamental distinctions. Firstly, investments are generally the largest asset position of an insurer. Secondly, Idiosyncratic accounts comprise the primary assets and liabilities of an insurance company. And finally, policyholders' surplus may be used as a substitute to equity. The assets of an insurance company is distinctive from that of other industries in that building, equipment, and inventory comprise a relatively small portion of the insurer's total assets. Financial instruments such as bonds and stocks often comprises the largest asset type held by an insurer. Co insurance companies also use unique accounts that are directly related to the writing of insurance contracts. Investments are an important source of supplemental income for insurers. Generally, the major asset class owned by insurers are bonds. Bonds are attractive investments to insurers because they are, relative to other investments, predictable, periodic, and secure. Other substantial investments may include stocks, cash, and cash equivalents. Premium balances or premium receivables represents accrued premium revenue due and unpaid on an insurance contract. 
reinsurance recoverables or reinsurance receivables represents a receivable amount owed to the insurer per reinsurance agreements covering paid claims. Deferred acquisition costs or DAC represents the deferral of costs to acquire a new customer over the duration of an insurance contract. The dichotomy of liability accounts for insurers are even more pronounced than assets. For many other industries, the principal liability is debt, such as bonds or bank loans. For insurers, the principal liabilities are insurance contract obligations. Insurers will often use the term reserves in reference to the liabilities on insurance contracts. Insurance companies also use unique accounts that are directly related to the writing of insurance contracts. The two principal liability accounts are claim liabilities and unearned premiums. Policy liabilities is established for enforced insurance policies for future events for which a liability exists due to a contract having been established. Unearned premiums or unearned premium reserves represent the deferral of premiums revenue attributable to premiums being paid in advance of when it is due or in advance of when it is earned. Unpaid claims or claim reserves represents claims on insurance contracts for events that have already occurred but have not yet been paid. This encompasses case reserves and incurred but not reported or IBNR. Unpaid adjusting expense or claim expense liabilities represents the cost of settling or defending claims on policies for events that have already occurred. It may also include expected adjusting expense for unreported claims. A unpaid adjusting expense is sometimes included in the unpaid claims account. Insurance expense is the liability for underwriting expenses incurred but unpaid corresponding with the insurance contract. Insurance expense can include commission liabilities and premium tax liabilities. Policyholder surplus is frequently used as a substitute to the conventional equity financial statement element that you may be more familiar with. This distinction is important for insurers because in some jurisdictions, policyholders receive senior ownership claim. The income statement is designed to present the financial statement results over a period of time to arrive at a net income or net loss. An insurer's income statement follows the same general form of other industries. The income statement contains revenue, expenses, gains, and losses. Insurer's income statements often include the following accounts relating to the underwriting operations and investment income. Premium revenue or earned premium represents the revenues received from policyholders for the insurance contract and deemed earned as it corresponds to insurance coverage considered already provided. Claims incurred represents claims incurred from policyholders during the reporting period. Claim adjustment expense represents claim-related expenses incurred on claims during the reporting period. This includes costs to settle, defend, or dispute claims. Underwriting expenses represent expenses incurred that directly relate to the insurance operation. This includes sales commission expenses, other acquisition expenses, general expenses, overhead, and various fees and taxes related to the insurance operation. Underwriting income represents the profit generated by an insurer's underwriting activity. 
this is the difference between the premiums earned and the expenses relating to claims incurred, claims adjustment expenses, and underwriting expenses. Policyholder dividends represents dividends to policyholders incurred during the reporting period. This account is generally included in underwriting income. Investment earnings is an important source of supplemental income for insurers. The business model of insurers is that premiums are received in advance of insurers paying out claims. During this period of time, insurers have access to these funds that can be used for investments. Investments enable insurers to deploy their capital more effectively, ensuring maximizing of revenue and minimizing of costs to policyholders. The cash flow statement is designed to summarize the cash entering and exiting the company and is generally organized in three sections, operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. The cash flow statement is typically less important for insurers than it is for organizations in other industries. This is due to the nature of operations of a insurance company. Insurers receive revenue in advance of expenses. This contrasts from many other industries where typically the business must first expend cash before receiving revenue, often making them more dependent on debt to fulfill working capital requirements. The notes and disclosures to the financial statements provide additional relevant information to supplement the financial statements. The notes and disclosures for an insurer may include a description of the accounting policies practiced, discussion of values not reliably estimable, such as risks and uncertainties associated with the claim liability estimates. The notes and disclosures to the financial statements may also include forward-looking information concerning estimates of future earnings or events yet to occur. That concludes this presentation. I wish to extend a special thanks to the institutes for creating and administering the Associate in Insurance Accounting and Finance designation and the accompanying textbooks authored by Michael W. Elliott. The resources supplied by this organization and author was critical in constructing this presentation.